Uh, my name is John Cadival, and I am the Deputy Division Director at the Division of Generic Drug Bioequivalence Evaluation over at the Office of Study Integrity and Surveillance at the Food and Drug Administration. I think that's a very interesting question. It's a very good question because as you and I are speaking right here and right now, uh, attendees at this uh, M10 workshop are thinking about the very same question. But I don't think there is a simple or straightforward answer to that because of a few reasons. Uh, number one, there is a wide range of experience when it comes to the conduct of regulated bioanalytical work uh, for the various laboratories that will be affected by this ICH-M10. So you have the wide range of experience, that's number one, which will dictate the ease of implementing the M10 once it's been finalized. But then number two, we have to consider how the various uh, regulatory agencies will be implementing the M10 once it is ready to go. But I think overall it should be hopefully a smooth transition once the M10 has been finalized and ready for adaptation. I don't believe so. Um, I believe that a harmonized guideline or a, a consensus guidance document has been on the uh, forefront of the minds of regulators and industry for quite some time because of the increase in globalization of bioanalytical work. Uh, I've been at the FDA for almost 16 years, so to see a document such as this, the draft M10, come to life is very exciting for me. Uh, so there are advantages. I think everyone is uh, on board with that, and those advantages, I think, have been a major driving force for the amount of work that the expert working group um, industry representatives and other stakeholders have been putting in towards the uh, M10? I would say so. Um, again, we have to think about what we're talking about here. A uh, consensus guidance document or a harmonized guideline uh, with the input of a number of regulatory bodies and industry representatives and other stakeholders uh, for the expert working group uh, to process all of this. This is an astounding uh, uh, accomplishment, uh, having reached this stage with the uh, draft M10. Uh, but again, we are at the draft stage, and there is still a good deal of feedback that's being collected. Uh, and I think once uh, all that feedback has been collected, uh, the M10 will get closer to uh, what regulators and industry and other stakeholders expect. I think it's fair to say that the regulatory landscape for bioanalysis has already been evolving uh, thanks to uh, active engagement among industry and regulators uh, during the drafting stages and finalization of other guidance documents. Uh, the one example being the 2018 FDA bioanalytical method validation guidance. Um, I think that when the M10 is finalized and ready for implementation, it, it won't be a far cry from the current regulatory landscape. Having said that, we have to keep in mind that what's in front of us is the draft M10. And once the expert working group has received all the public comments and has processed it, the uh, final M10 may be a little different from its draft predecessor. Uh, what I've seen is uh, a great deal of dedication towards the M10 from the expert working group, um, the various regulatory bodies, uh, industry representatives, and other stakeholders. The uh, meetings, conferences, uh, panel discussions, workshops that have been focused on the draft M10 have been lively to say the least thanks to uh, very robust discussions uh, and exchanging of ideas, and really just a sheer openness among all parties involved uh, who have a vested interest in the M10. And this is very similar to uh, what we saw with the uh, drafting and eventual finalization of the FDA 2018 Bioanalytical Method Validation Guidance. The intent there was to keep that as a transparent process so that uh, everyone can provide their opinion. Um, I see a very similar energy and vibe here uh, at, at this workshop and in other venues when the M10 was within focus. Uh, so that is very refreshing to see.